Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, The Zone of Anatomy. Today we are going to discuss about a vertebrae and basically we are going to focus on cervical vertebrae. If we recap whatever we have learned in our previous lecture, we know that a vertebral column has divided into five parts, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, and coccyx. So the total number of cervical vertebrae is seven, thoracic is 12, lumbar is five. And today we are going to focus just on cervical vertebrae, that is, it has total number of seven. So to make it easy, I have put a picture of the cervical vertebrae on my left hand side and the feature associated with it on the right hand side. Now just correlate the diagram with the features. It makes you easy to understand the basic character of all the cervical vertebrae. So let's begin. First of all, the cervical vertebrae is the smallest of the true vertebrae. Why? because it is present just beneath the skull, or we say it is the starting point of our vertebral column. Then on my left-hand side, you see there is a two transverse process. And between the transverse process, there is a hole or a foramen. So this hole or a foramen is known as foramen transverse area. Why we call it as foramen transverse area? Because it is present between the two transverse process. Now, then, now here you see a body which is a vertebral body. And when we talk about its shape, it is somewhat a square shape and it has a small height. So the vertebral body is short in height and square shape. Then the spinous process. So the spinous process is short. And it has a bifid. Bifid means a cleft or a notch or it is bifurcated. Then we see a vertebral canal which is present between the vertebral body and the spinous process. So this vertebral canal or a foramen is somewhat a triangular in shape. Now the point which we need to memorize is all the cervical vertebrae has a transverse process. There might be few cervical vertebrae in which the vertebral canal is absent, spinous process is absent, but the most common thing which is present in all cervical vertebrae is a transverse process. So all transverse vertebrae has a transverse process, sorry, all cervical vertebrae has a transverse process. It might come into your MCQ, so do not forget it. Now, when we talk about the movement of the cervical vertebrae, the movement is maximum lateral flexion or we say a flexion. Now here you see a diagram which is depicting that the cervical vertebrae is further classified into typical and atypical. When we come to the part typical, it has a four typical vertebrae that is third, fourth, fifth and sixth and the atypical that is first, second and seventh. We put third to six vertebrae in a typical because they have a common features. And we kept first, second and seventh in another group that is atypical because they have some unique features that make them different from all the cervical vertebrae. First we see typical cervical that is third to six. Since I say you already that the typical cervicals have a common features. So let's study them in a common way. The process to study is same, just correlate the diagram with the features. First of all, when we see the body, the body is small. Then we come move forward and see the spinous process. The spinous process has the bifurcate and it is also a shot. Then we see a transverse foramen, the transverse process. So the transverse process has a transverse foramen. Okay. And it was pierced by sulcus for spinal nerves. Then we come to the lamina. Here is a lamina. When we see it briefly 
we come to know that it is narrow and thinner above like at the below it is somewhat thicker but at above it is narrow and thinner so it might came into the mcq that at what portion the lamina of third to sixth cervical vertebrae is thinner so the correct answer is above then coming to the vertebral foramen vertebral foramen is somewhat large it is broad and it is also triangular in shape then here we see a superior articular facet so the superior articular facet is located medially then there is a term known as the articular pillar so this articular pillar is just a fusion of superior and inferior articular facet and nothing else moving forward here it is uh, another diagram which is showing a typical cervical vertebrae as we have seen earlier it has superior articular facet transverse process transverse foramen vertebral canal spinous process pedicles and group for spinal nerve this is the task which you need to perform by yourself that makes your concept crystal clear this is answer you may refer then coming to the atypical as i say that the atypical has very unique features than a common cervical vertebrae so there is only 3c1 c2 and c7 so let's start since it has a unique feature we'll give them a nickname c1 that is atypical c1 vertebrae we, we call it as a atlas now just see a picture and correlate its feature first if we see it very carefully it looks somewhat like a ring so it shape is like a ring then we come to the vertebral body so as i already say you that uh, there are some parts in a cervical vertebrae which might absent so in at Plus, the part which is absent is the vertebral body as well as there is no spinal process so it has no spinal process it has no vertebral body so these are the exception which might come in the examination so just remember these two points then in this diagram we saw that there is a lateral mass okay so lateral mass is present between anterior tubercle and and sorry it is present between anterior arch and the posterior arch so lateral mass is somewhat a prominence which is present between anterior arch and the posterior arch now coming to the interior arch it has a facet for articulation with dense of axis here you can see here it is a articular facet for dense of axis then when we talk about the development so the atlas has the three centers for ossification another point which we need to learn by heart that is there is an atlanto occipital joint since we say that the atypical vertebrae c1 is known as atlas and it is present just below the occipital joint so it the joint is known as atlanto occipital joint and its work is to permit a person to look towards the right or left so the points which we need to learn in this atlas is that vertebral body spinous process is absent and the movement of atlanto occipital joint is right and left coming to another that is c2 its nickname is axis the unique process the unique feature which we see in this diagram that it consists of this something known as odontoid process then coming to the transverse process as i say transverse process is common in all the cervical vertebrae so transverse process transverse process is somewhat small and it has a single tubercle as compared to the other cervicals there are 
to tubercles if you remember that coming to the spinous process spinous process is somewhat large it it is very like it is very strong and it is has a cleft or it is bifid and it has one unique feature that is the largest of all cervical region like the spinous process of axis is largest of all so it might come in your mcq coming to superior articular facet when we see its shape it is somewhat round it is directed if we see like um, briefly it is directed upwards and laterally so it if it is uh, directed upwards and laterally so it means it supports atlas so the function of superior articular facet is to support atlas and atlas is our c1 vertebrae now coming to a typical vertebrae that is c7 and uh, the nickname of c7 is vertebrae prominence vertebrae prominence we say because the c7 vertebrae is the only cervical vertebrae which is long and easily palpable that's the reason it is termed as vertebra prominence its spinous process is long and it is easily palpable it might come in the form of mcq it ends are its ends are somewhat round and it is not bifid as we see that other vertebras are bifid but it is not bifid so it might come in your mcq that a spinous process which is not bifid so the answer will be vertebral prominence or c7 vertebra then when we come to our transverse foramen so the transverse foramen is small and it do not transmit any vertebral artery as compared to the other cervicals which transmit our arteries veins and again the vertebral foramen the vertebral foramen is somewhat triangular in shape so this much we need to memorize in a typical vertebrae hope you enjoy this lecture and i make it easy for you to classify c1 c2 c7 and c3 to c6 so if you like this video do like share comment and subscribe and give reviews in the comment section thank you